So hey guys, welcome back to the next video in the Proxmox series. As promised in the earlier video where I showed you how you could get Proxmox working on your PS4. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could install Windows 10 on Proxmox for PS4. So if you haven't yet watched the earlier video, the installation video and the setup video, please do not continue with this video because this would not make any sense. Okay. So make sure that you have watched the earlier video and you have followed everything to a T only then will this work. Okay. So without further ado, let us just begin with the requirements. Obviously, you're going to require a PS4 currently running Proxmox. And then you're also going to require the Windows 10 ISO. And apart from that, there is also a vertio.iso that will be required for this process. All of these have been linked in the description. Just do check them out and do download them. Now, once you have downloaded all of these files, we need a way to move this into the Proxmox drive that is connected to our PS4 right now. Okay. So for that, what we can do is we can go into the local section right here and then go to the ISO images. As you can see, I've already uploaded them to my system. But in your case, you got multiple options to upload the ISO files. The first one would be the most straightforward one. You could go to the upload options and uh, choose the ISO file from your computer and then click on upload. Depending on your internet speed and the SSD or hard drive speed, it will take some time. Or else if you have a direct link for these ISOs, you could click on download from URL and paste the URL for the ISO and uh, query the URL and then click on download to download it directly to the Proxmox drive. Okay. And yet we have a third option, which is probably the fastest among all the three. You could just connect the Proxmox USB drive to a Linux machine and copy the required ISO files to this folder that you see on your screen right now. Okay. This is probably the fastest method. Now, once we have the ISOs uploaded and ready for install, we can move on to the next step that is creating the VM and starting the Windows 10 installation on Proxmox or PS4. To do that, what you have to do is click on create VM. And from this point onwards, make sure that you're following this tutorial to a T. You can make changes here and there and you're free to experiment. But uh, to begin with, you could use these settings. Okay. First of all, you could name your VM anything. I'm going to name it Windows 10 and then go to the OS section. And in the ISO image section, you could just use this drop down menu to choose this particular file. That is the Windows 10 ISO. And under the guest OS section, change the type from Linux to Windows. And then under the version, do choose this option that is for Windows 10. Okay. And then go into system. And here we're going to change the machine type to Q35. And then the BIOS, I'm going to choose OVM UEFI, which is my preferred version. You could also go with the C BIOS, which I guess is the legacy version, but I prefer UEFI over legacy. So I have chosen this option. And as for the EFI storage, just click here and choose this local. Okay. And then make sure that the SCSI controller is Vert IO SCSI single. And then move on to the next portion where we have to choose the disks. Now for the bus or device, I'm going to change IDE to SCSI. And then I'm going to choose the required amount of storage for this particular VM. So I'm going to choose a 50. 50 would be fine for me for this testing. But if you have a huge SSD or something, you could choose hundreds of GBs. Okay. It depends upon you. And come to the CPU. Now there are eight cores on this PS4. So I'm just going to allot six cores for this process. Again, you're free to choose four or six or whatever. Okay. And then coming to memory for this particular tutorial, we're going to be using 4096, which is safe for now. Uh, you could try experimenting with higher values, but I haven't yet. So it's up to you to experiment and then come to the network section. Make sure that the bridge is VMBR zero and under the model, change this to vert IO para virtualized and disable the firewall by clicking here. Okay. And then we go to confirm and then click finish. Okay. As you can see, the new VM has already appeared here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this VM and then I'm going to click on the start button right here. So you could check the status of this uh, VM right here. As you can see, it is loading and it says okay. And now we can go into the console menu where we could actually get the display of what's happening on this VM. Now, as you can see, the Proxmox Windows 10 is loading and it says to press any key and you can press just any key on your keyboard and the Windows 10 installation will begin in a few seconds. Now, as for this display that you see right now, there are multiple options. As you can see, you could use some other uh, application like no VNC to uh, access this. Or if you have completed the installation of Windows, you could easily use the RTP protocol that is remote desktop connection. Okay. For now, I'm just going to use this uh, browser based console. Okay. And now we have the steps. Now, these steps are pretty generic. There are a few changes that are required for this. I'm going to talk about those in detail. The rest of them I'm going to breeze through. Okay. Now we have reached the portion where we have to choose the drive where we want to install this particular OS to. 
Now, as you can see, there are none here. So we'll have to load the driver for this to work properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into hardware and then under the CD drive section, I'm going to double click here and then I'm going to change the ISO image quickly to word IO and then click OK. OK, and then go back to the console. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this load driver section and then click on browse and then go into this CD drive word IO. OK, and then I'm going to quickly scroll down and choose the VIO SCSI and then I'm going to expand the Windows 10 folder and then click on AMD 64 and then press OK. And this will bring up a new driver. I'm going to click on next. Now, as you can see, the 50 GB that we had allocated to this VM is now visible. Next, what I'm going to do is click on new and then click apply. OK, and this will create the necessary partitions for installation. And that's it. It's done. And now the installation will say that Windows can't be installed on this particular drive. Now, this is a genuine error because right now we have loaded the word IO ISO. We'll have to shift it back to the Windows 10 ISO. And for that, I'm going to go into hardware and then under CD, I'm going to change it back to Windows 10 and click on OK. Now go back to the console. Now let's try refreshing quickly. And yep, that error has disappeared. Now click on next. And uh, right now the installation is going to happen. This is going to take quite some time. So we're going to wait for that to complete. OK. So two reboots later, we are right now at the initial setup of Windows 10. You could choose your region and stuff right here. And I'm going to breeze through all of these steps because these most of you guys are familiar with. Okay. And voila, right now we have Windows 10 running on Proxmox for PS4. Now, the first thing you're going to notice right here is that we don't have internet connection right now. Let's fix that. Okay. So for that, I'm going to right click on the start menu and go to device manager. And then as you can see, the Ethernet controller is not properly installed. So before that, I'm going to go into the hardware section and then change this back to the word IO file and then click on OK. Now let's go back to Windows 10. And then I'm going to right click on Ethernet controller and then click on update driver and then browse my computer for drivers. Now click on browse and then I'm going to scroll down and go into this word IO ISO. And then let's slowly go into this folder that is netkvm and under this we have windows 10 and then amd64 and then click on ok click on next and it will automatically install the drivers okay as you can see we are connected to the ethernet and let us quickly see if it works i'm going to use the edge browser here obviously that's the first default browser that comes with windows 10 And let us go to our favorite website, ps4linux.com, isn't it? And yep, here it does load. Now, just for the sake of it, let us quickly run dxdiag to see what we are working with here. And choose run and then type dxdiag and press enter. So here we have it. We have almost 4 GB of RAM and then under display, we have about 2029 MB of RAM. Well, this is not the actual PS4 GPU, mind you. So this is the best that we can get right now. But as promised, I will be working on a GPU pass through. I cannot guarantee that it will work or if at all it is possible, but I'm not going to give up as of now. I'll be working on it and that's it for this video guys. So if you did like it, please click on the like button, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button. So you receive the updates as soon as I post a new video. And if you like my work and if you would like to support further of my endeavors, including the GPU pass through project, 
it would be great if you could donate some amount to this project. The link to donate is in the description. If you have some extra money lying around, please consider donating. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.